Hello, my name is Dwayne Kimball, owner and founder of KMD89, VA Claims Consultant, Leave No Vet Behind, and also I'm a United States Army veteran. Today I'm bringing you another educational video as it pertains to the VA Disability Compensation Claims Process. Today I'm going to be discussing the VA CMP exam and or DBQ for the joints. Range of motion. How is range of motion tested and what instrument needs to be used when conducting these measurements, okay? But before we get into today's video, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and don't forget to share this video with your fellow veterans. Also, you can follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So today's video, range of motion. How is range of motion tested and what instrument is used? At the end of this video, I'm going to share my feedback on a couple of exams or my experience on a couple of exams that I had as it pertains to joint claims that I filed with the VA. Okay. But range of motion. So when you file a claim for ankles, knees, uh, hips, elbow, I'm sorry. Yeah. Elbows, shoulders, and wrists. Those are the major joints. Okay. And also for the back and neck and even some minor joints, range of motion testing has to be done. Okay. To figure out the degree for that particular joint. So, uh, for each joint you have four, I'm sorry, uh, flexion extension. Those are just a couple of the measurements that they're going to be taking. Now, the instrument that is used is called a gonometer. Now I'm not a medical professional. I just know this. I did some research on it. And also in, uh, Previously, I've seen several DBQs or CMP exams and even my own where the doctor stated that these measurements was uh, conducted by using a gonometer. Okay, but the gonometer is used to measure the degree for flexion, extension, extension, abduction, right lateral rotation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and it's very key. All right, because you want to make sure that doctor gets these measurements right. Cause that could be the difference between 10, 20, 30, 40% if you get service connected. Okay. And a lot of veterans don't know that. All right. So what I did was I put together a short clip so you can see how the range of motion is tested. The, uh, individuals in this video is showing, uh, them using the gonometer, uh, to test the range of motion. Okay. So check out this video. Okay, so you can see in that short clip that I just shared with you how they measure the range of motion. And in each video and clip, it showed one thing, the, the gonometer being used to measure it for the wrist, the ankle, the hip. Okay, those are just some of the joints uh, that I showed you. But why is that important? Okay, and the reason why it's important is because if you go out, well, even if you go out and get a DBQ and or you go to a CMP exam, okay, there's VA regulation that states that that doctor has to use a gonometer to re measure that range of motion when they document it on a CMP exam and or your private doctor puts it on a DBQ, all right? So I'm going to show you the VA M21 reference and the 38 CFR that states a gonometer needs to be used, okay? So... Here in this slide, you can see uh, M21, the importance of accurate measurements in joint cases. And then I highlighted uh, a couple of things in red for you, okay? So I'm not going to read the entire uh, M21 
and or 38 CFR. But in the M21, it says accurate measurements are very important in joint cases. V examinations must measure joint motion with a gonometer. Read it again. VA examinations must measure joint motion with a gonometer. Okay. A number of disability benefit questionnaires relating to joints require use of a gonometer. Now, the M21 is not law, it's just a reference. But the reason why I like using it, look down below, it says the importance of accurate measurements of joints, C38 CFR 4.46, Code of Federal Regulations. I list it. Uh, just below the M21. 38 CFR 4.46 accurate measurements. I'm only going to read what's in red. The use of a gonometer in the measurement of uh, limitation of motion is indispensable in examinations conducted within the Department of Veteran Affairs. So there you can see it. All right. So why is that important? Well, one, if you go to a CMP exam, and that doctor's not using a gonometer, you might want to say, hey, doc, aren't you supposed to use a gonometer? And if that doctor says no, you might have that regulation stuck, stuck in your pocket and you can pull it out and say, hey, according to 38 CFR, you're supposed to, okay, to make sure you get an accurate measurement, all right? And then, it, you know, let's just say you go out and you get a DBQ from the chiropractor or nurse practitioner or physician assistant, medical doctor, and they don't use one. But well, that regulation is telling you that needs to be done per that particular, the um, range of motion needs to be tested or measured by using a gonometer. Now, I looked at a back DBQ this morning, and what I was looking for, what is there a question that asked the examiner is the range of mo was the range of motion tested by using a gonometer? No. Now I can remember back in 09 when I went to my first CMP exam and I got a copy of that CMP exam and that question was on there. Okay. So I didn't look at the other joints, just that one. Uh, I didn't look at the other joint DBQs, just that one. But if you go out to a private uh, medical professional, you might want to make sure they annotate, not only do they measure the range of motion using a gonometer, but they annotate it somewhere on that DBQ, okay? Because if it gets in front of um, an adjudicator, they may say, hey, the only thing that's missing from this joint DBQ is the doctor's statement stating that they use the gonometer to measure your range of motion, okay? Now, as I stated earlier in this video, I was going to share uh, experience with a couple of exams for joints that I went to. Okay. So the first one, I went for my ankles and knees, the CMP examiner. And this was well before DBQs came out. Okay. Uh, and third party contractors. So you had to go. The only place that was doing the VA CMP exams was the VA, uh, CMP office. So I report, I go in and the doctor was super, I think he was a physician assistant, but anyway, he was super nice. He was a veteran himself. He explained exactly what he was doing. He pulled out the gonometer. He had me to do the range of motions on my ankles uh, and my knees. And he explained the entire process. And I ended up getting service connected for it, okay? And the second CMP exam I went in for was my lower back. And in some of my other videos, you hear me talk about I had four CMP exams. Two of them went really well, and two of them was horrible. This was one of the horrible ones, okay, for my back. The doctor immediately tried to play tricks. He was like, hey, take your shoes off. I'm like, why do I have to take my shoes off for a range of motion for my back? And I kicked off my flip-flops. He looked over. He was like, okay, put them back on. And I immediately thought, okay, if I had on shoes, he was trying to see if I was going to bend over, okay, and try and measure the range of motion that way. So he had me stand up. I stood up. He said, okay, now I'm going to measure your range of motion. He says, I want you to touch your toes. But when you feel pain, stop. And I said, okay. So I started to lean forward. Kept leaning forward. And then I stopped when I started, when I felt pain. 
And the whole time he kept saying, keep going, keep going. And when I stopped, he said, keep going. I said, well, you told me to stop when I felt pain. I'm feeling pain. But he did not use a gonometer. Okay. So he had me do some other range of motion. And I let him go through and do it. And then I said, well, Doc, aren't you supposed to use a gonometer measuring these range of motions? He says, oh, I just eyeball it. I've been doing this for years. And I'm like, but I'm sure the VA regulation states that you have to use a gonometer. Oh, no, it's fine. I've been doing it this way. Trust me. And I was like, hmm. My back of my mind, I'm thinking, no, nah, I don't trust you because you already tried to, you know, uh, get over on me at the beginning of the exam. I didn't tell him that, but I'm thinking that. OK, so didn't use a gonometer, but the vibe was just negative as soon as I walked in the room. So I, I knew he was going to give a negative medical opinion. And I was already thinking about, OK, what is my next move to try and get service connected? All right. So about a week later, I go to uh, the VA, uh, VA, VAMC. And I uh, release of information office and I get a copy of the CMP exam and guess what was on there? The question, did you measure the veteran's range of motion using a gonometer? He checked. Yes. He flat out lied. Okay. And that's why I always challenge veterans. Make sure you submit that for your request to get a copy of your claims file on CD, especially after you've done a CMP exam, either through, uh, the VA CMP office and or the third party contractor, because you want to see that. OK, you want to see exactly uh, what they wrote. All right. I hope you found this video educational and informational. Make sure you like subscribe, hit that notification button and don't forget to share this video with your fellow veterans. Thank you.